So I'm here today with Martin Halstead from HPE, and we're going to talk about some of the key developments in telco infrastructure management. So Martin, good to see you. Thank you. Hello. Good to see you as well. So um, uh, just as as a starting point, obviously, uh, HPE is a very well-known name, very well-established company in in telecoms, ICT, media, entertainment, etc. But can you just uh, remind us of all the different uh, ways in which HPE plays a role within the the telecom and communications networking sector? Because it's more than just about delivering servers, isn't it? No, that's absolutely correct. So, um, I mean, we were pretty much instrumental in introducing x86-based servers into the telecoms industry. You know, this was at least 10 years ago. Um, And we did that through the major network equipment providers that are out there. So they used our... um, you know, industry standard servers as part of their portfolio for their offerings into the market. Um, And we were highly successful and still are in that space. Um, So obviously, you know, since then, um, the industry then pivoted towards, uh, you know, the introduction of things like NFV, etc. And so we started looking at our portfolio and how we could, you know, introduce as many offerings as possible into the telecoms industry to, you know, to meet that new need where effectively you, you could start looking then at disaggregation of uh, you know the applications, the virtualized network functions from the infrastructure itself, and we felt at the time, and, and absolutely are today, you know that we could be a key player in that market. So, so we looked across our whole portfolios, not just the servers, but also you know our storage portfolio, mm-hmm. um, our Ethernet switching portfolio, and then um, you know through uh, an organization within uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise uh, called CMS, you know we actually have telecoms applications as well. So, you know, filling in product offerings of, of uh, you know, HP that are specific to the tele- telecoms market. Okay. Uh, and, and HP has quite a lot of heritage in, in telecom software mm-hmm. um, uh, going back quite a few years. And I guess that has been a good launch pad or a good sort of uh, foundation for what uh, the company is doing now in terms of telecom infrastructure management. So can you give us a little over- overview about how HPE is is meeting some of the market's needs in terms of, of helping operators to be able to manage what is now looks like it's becoming an even more complex architecture that they'll they'll need to manage. Yeah, absolutely correct. And you know the 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 areas that we've identified um, for infrastructure management are really specific to you know distributed environments. You know, and that's really where the telecoms operators are really different to the enterprise, and especially you know large kind of hyperscale operators who have pretty monolithic you know centralized environments. You know, telecoms mm-hmm. operators are very very different. You yep. know, they um, you could think of each of their points as presence is effectively being a miniature data center. Yep. And as they start rolling out their applications, you know, from the core data center out more towards the edge, you know, you're going to see more and more x86 based infrastructure being deployed, um, you know, further and further away from those core data centers. So you have the scaling issue um, in terms of infrastructure management. But on t- the thing that you know, doesn't necessarily help with that too much is that you can expedite, you know, you, you, you extend the issue with that because you, um, you have a set of, um, you know, heterogeneous infrastructure as well that, uh, that the operators are deploying. So the infrastructure that they would deploy typically in a core data center is fundamentally different to the ones that they deploy in the edge and right. further out in the network. And that's based on space constraints, environmental needs, you know, component choices, etc. But also, you know, typically we aren't the only de- vendor that is deployed in those environments. You know, there's HP, but we also sit alongside our competitors in that space as well. But the operators need to try and manage this infrastructure in the same way. Yes. So, you know, so again, that creates challenges as well as all the different API sets that, you know, that infrastructure exposes. So we've tried to address all three of those issues really um, in uh, in what we've devised is you know you know we believe as being a truly open framework for infrastructure management okay we'll come to so the the, the open aspect uh, of course is is very interesting but open is a term that's that's used very broadly um, yeah. in the industry but if we can just come back because you mentioned uh, you know distributed architectures and edge there and mm-hmm. these kind of things have been talked about for a while but it's certain this is something that certainly seems to be becoming a reality 
um, uh, now rather than something that's just talked about. Uh, so, what, what's what's driving that? Why is 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 edge computing now an actual thing rather than just a concept? Yeah. So, um, you know, what we've observed over the last, um, you know the last 12, 18 months, is that telecoms operators taking seriously now the uh, the move towards new services, you know, primarily around their introduction of 5G, you know, right. in, yep. initially as a, um, you know, a non-standalone offering. Um, so they'd be looking at virtualizing the radio access network in combination, you know, with their existing LTE core. Um, but then moving to standalone architectures, and we're already in conversations with some of the operators that are pretty much on the bleeding edge of that. Yeah. So, you know, so so new technologies like 5G, as well as the introduction of computing more towards the edge. Um, so, you know, multi-axis edge computing has been fairly slow to take off. But, you know, we are starting to see more and more opportunities in that space as well, you know, where the operators want to collaborate with um you know, ISVs or their partners in terms of delivering, you know, enhanced offerings to uh, to their, um, you know, to their enterprise customers. And, you know, we have been asked to, um, you know, to provide infrastructure and services alongside that as well. Okay. Uh, and key to the requirements, uh, and we hear this all, all the time from the operator community, is that um, they, they need um, technology and they need plans and strategies and architectures that are truly multi-vendor mm. but are truly open in terms of not being locked into any one set of technologies or or, or any particular roadmaps mm. so is that how you see open as well is, is open truly you can take this anywhere but but with a structure with a framework yeah that's absolutely correct so um so what we we've worked on um over the last 12 to 18 months is um, and, and really strongly in collaboration with Intel is a is a framework for infrastructure management and the base layer for that um, for that framework is what we call um, an ODEM resource aggregator. So ODEM stands for Open Distributed Infrastructure Management okay. and the resource aggregation function of that ODEM framework um, basically takes any um, southbound um, infrastructure API and data model from any vendor and then via a plugin it mediates that uh, communications channel um, northbound into a fully DMTF Redfish compliant data model. So what does that mean? It basically means that we have a single data model, a single software defined infrastructure, full SDI representation of a data center. So not just the compute nodes, which typically, um, you know, Redfish has been adopted as, you know, as the standard for managing compute nodes, but it's really extending that to cover storage, the Ethernet switch fabric as well, you know, so typically the spine leaf architectures right. that exist within the telco's data centers. If you have um, managed racks, then um, the rack management modules of those um, you know, of, of those managed racks would all be represented in an aggregated view, okay. um, you know, through that single Redfish data model. And the idea would be that any um, northbound, um, you know, OSS BSS solution that was going to query um, and want to set up operations on that infrastructure within the data center just needs to, you know, set up operations on that Redfish data model, right, which is which, of course, is fully standards based. Um, and, and so from our perspective, we see that as being fairly unique um, and something that's badly needed by, um, you know, by the industry at large. OK. Uh, and just to be clear, when you say data center there, you're talking about a, a, a data center anywhere in in the broad i guess you could in, in this context in this context you could refer to it as the the telco cloud these data centers could be you know just a couple of racks right at the very edge of the yes. network near customers or it could be in a, a local exchange um, that's been converted or, or is now acting as a data center yes correct so you know we we devise this for those massively distributed environments so the idea would be that you know if you distribute these this resource aggregation function across each of the you know these remote 
you know, in quotes, data centers, you know, um, remote points of presence where you have, um, you know, enterprise like infrastructure that requires, you know, infrastructure management, then um, what you can effectively build are hierarchies for infrastructure management. Right. So you so you aggregate visibility of the infrastructure, you know, via these distributed um, resource aggregation functions, meaning that you can then centrally manage that infrastructure via, you know, composition or management function, um, you know, composition or fault management solutions, etc., which are, again don't necessarily need to be as distributed as the right. resource aggregation function. So, you know, having this hierarchical, you know, approach to infrastructure management, we feel is a, a sensible way of being able to scale out. Um, infrastructure management for these massively distributed environments, but in a completely open industry standard way. And when I, what I mean by open and industry standard is that um, the plugins that would be used by each of the vendors in order to mediate their API sets and data models to Redfish um, is fully, you know, it's going to be open sourced um, and um, uh, you know, southbound, those API sets can can be exactly what the vendors are using today. So there's no need for vendors to convert things to Redfish. Right. You know, through this, uh, through the plugin model, that's what they would gain anyway. You know, so we as HP, we are developing plugins for our infrastructure across compute storage and Ethernet switch fabrics. There's no reason why any other vendor couldn't go and develop their own plugins as well uh, to do this. And we're already, we're actively in conversations with various, you know, partners of ours to do exactly that. Okay. And, uh, you know, what, what kind of reception have you had from, from early discussions in, in the industry about this? Is this, is this like a light bulb mo moment or is this something like, oh, you know, that sounds pretty good because we were trying to do this ourselves or we were trying to do it with a systems integrator? What, what kind of feedback have you had? Yeah, so, um, so we've had conversations with uh, system integrators, our vendor partners, um, you know, so some of the major network equipment providers, ISVs, etc., um, as well as the you know the end uh, operators and for all three of those groups um, the uh, the feedback has been extremely positive so um, you know we're in discussions at the moment uh, in terms of setting up a proof of concepts uh, for the operators um, you know we, we have a few of those conversations underway at the moment okay um, in terms of our vendor partners, they want to have you know instances of the code that we've developed so that they can start um, building their own plugins and maybe extending the Redfish model as well, um, so that you know it can more suit some of the features and functions that they would like to see exposed. Then um, you know through work within the DMTF um, as part of Redfish, uh, you know for their particular implementation. So yeah, I would say overall, um, you know. Our um, our feedback on what we're proposing here has been, you know, it's badly needed, and uh, and been extremely positive. Okay, so you you mentioned open source there. So what kind of role is the open source community going to have in the in the development of this framework? Yeah, so the open source community we see as being critical in terms of uh, making sure that you know infrastructure management is truly open and available to the entire community so um, so what we've done is we've worked along Intel in terms of um, looking at the open source community and contributing the code that we are developing so this the Odom resource aggregation function is going to be donated to the open source community alongside um, plugins which again would be open source it'll all be Apache 2 licensed and freely available uh, to the community um, Intel are going to be doing exactly the same thing in terms of contributing some of their uh, key code that they have for infrastructure management um, and we already are working with Intel which is part of the demonstration that we have at Mobile World Congress to you know in, in terms of showing um, Intel's um, code, their, their rack scale design uh, pod management code, uh, into working with the resource aggregation function that we have. All of that would then be open sourced um, as part of the um, of the open source community. And so, from our perspective, we would actively encourage, and you know, are in the process of doing that. You know, encouraging our partners, the um, you know the the ISV community, um, the network equipment providers, 
um, as well as the operators to, you know, to take a look at what we're doing in the open source community. We'll be making some announcements at Mobile World Congress specifically to do with that. Um, and you know, we, we would actively encourage participation so that vendors can go and build plugins for this architecture, enhance the Redfish schemas that we've been working on, build um, you know, northbound OSS stacks that can interface with this unified data model. Um, you know, there are various things that vendors can do to try and you know, open up the uh, you know the telecoms infrastructure and and it's you know it's challenges uh, that it, it's going to have in terms of um, you know rollout of new service offerings and technologies. So uh, I guess a lot of the the companies that are going to be interested in this and that the HP wants to to talk to about this are going to be in Barcelona at Mobile World Congress, uh, which you, you mentioned before, you're already going to be doing some some work there with, with partners, including Intel. So is, is this something that you're going to be shouting about in Barcelona? Yes, absolutely. So it's going to be a key focus of uh, our booth at Mobile World Congress. So um, as part of the organization that I'm in, in terms of you know HP's representing HP's infrastructure, it'll be a key focus of that organization. Uh, we also will have Intel in the booth, um, demonstrating um, you know the interworking of their uh, Rackscale design code base into. Um, the resource aggregation function that uh, HP has developed. Um, so they'll be demonstrating that. We'll have a variant of that, um, you know, within you know HP's part of the booth, and um, you know we would actively encourage um, you know the, the the wider community to come and see what we're doing in this space. Okay. Well, it's it's certainly a topic that I, I know that you know the broad uh, telco industry is talking about, and something that everybody needs to, to 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 be sorting out. So I'm sure it'll attract a lot of interest, and it'll be a topic of conversation not only at, at MWC 2020 but well beyond. So, Martin, thanks very much. Thank you.